Exercise my art, a haiku poem I will start. What's she doing? Search me. Something about a haiku poem? Whatever that means. Capturing the moment is the key. A tiger springing is what I see. I do not like that first word, strong. The meaning's right. The feeling is wrong. The very word has just occurred. Now to do line number two. What's feline mean? I think it's another name for cat. The tiger is a member of the cat family. line number three, and then it will be done, you see. Coiled power unleashed beneath the feline fury, the jungle grass quivers. It is perfect. Well, it will do. A typical example of haiku. Excuse us. Oh, my what? I now disrupt because you choose to interrupt and keep me from my value task. Well, go ahead. Your questions asked. Oh, sorry. We just want to know who you were. Couplet. Isn't a couplet something to do with rhymes? A couplet? Rhymes, lines one and two. And that's exactly what I do. Oh, well, we're pleased to meet you, Dr. Couplet. I'm Lynn. And this is Chris. Uh, we're reporters from the Herbertville Chronicle. Oh, members of the noble press. I don't read news, I must confess. Well, we're a very small paper. But we'd like to print some of your... Haiku poetry? How do you spell that? Got it. Can you tell us more about haiku? No. From Japan, it did originate. Its simple rules I will translate. There doesn't need to be a rhyme. It captures single specks of time. Regarding nature, it should be 
In lines, there must be only three. The first line is five syllables long. The second seven, more would be wrong. Last line, back to five again. And that is all I need explain. Can we try one? Try first with words. And if you're right, a picture will be your rewarding sight. Why don't we do one on spiders? They're part of nature. Oh, yuck. Don't say that. Spiders spin beautiful webs that sparkle in light, and they're small and useful, and they hide in corners. Hey, I've got a good beginning line. Busiest spiders, busy as spiders. That's five syllables. And then you could have spun beautiful webs as a second line. Hey, that's only five syllables. Spun beautiful webs. We need two more. Okay. How about adding silver in front of webs? That's nice. And the last line could be in the sparkling moonlight. In the sparkling moonlight. Oh, that's one syllable too many. In sparkling moonlight? Yeah. Busiest spiders spun beautiful silver webs in sparkling moonlight. It's perfect. Our first haiku. Well, it will do. It's clever. You're in devil. <laughs> Your uh, machine makes it easy. Yeah, how does it work? Oh, I use this board to help create. Try pushing burn, key number eight. Oh, I got the word make. If the word make just doesn't do, choose from a synonym or two. words all in the same thing. A synonym must be a word that has the same meaning as another word. Then I know another synonym for the word make. Form. Would you like to hear some more about the rule you can't ignore? The English language is a treasure. To use it well gives one such pleasure. When writing any single thing, remember these, the words I sing. When writing for your pleasure, whether it be fact or fantasy, the syllables and the words you use must make a verbal symphony. <laughs> With adjective and adverb to give noun and verb some company, the synonyms and antonyms will save you from catastrophe. <laughs> Commas, dots, and dashes help. Of that you have my guarantee. Contractions need a little mark. That we call apostrophe. <laughs> Don't jump on a tense to tense. That really is a shameful crime. When writing prose or poetry, one must remember when to rhyme. When writing prose or poetry, one must remember when to rhyme. So study your thesaurus to widen your vocabulary. Discover different meanings by glancing at the dictionary. You 
must remember all these rules and then attack the page with zeal and use the English language to express exactly how you feel. You must remember all these rules and then attack the page with zeal and use the English language to express exactly how you feel. Maybe you could help us in another way. Will, tell. We're trying to find out about Dunedin. <gasps> that villain. I will criticize. Avoiding him is very wise. He rules this world with iron will. When we meet, I feel quite ill. Gladly, I will volunteer whatever news you wish to hear. We think Dunedin's changing our history books and we want to find some evidence to prove it. But we don't know where to look. I'll give you a sample to be an example. Wait, that's it. Stop right there. What is it? I can't see anything. The place of change. Maybe that's where Denise's changing the history books. There are a lot of books on the desk. But I can't seem to make out what they are. Let's try to identify. See if we can magnify. Look, it's the first edition. We've got to get that book and see if it's the same as the third edition. Dr. Couplet, how can we get to the place of change? You can travel to that place, but a problem you must face. If you fail to answer it, you'll end up in the problem pit. No, thanks. Once in the problem pit is enough. Isn't there some other way to travel that doesn't depend on solving problems? Let truth and courage be your guide. The time has come. You must decide. All right. What's the problem? A limerick? Oh, I made up those kinds of poems before. Shouldn't be too difficult. Let's do it line by line. Hmm. What should we start with? How about a reporter named Chris had a wish? <laughs> hey, no, I was only joking. Oh, that's done it. Now we have to find something that rhymes with wish. Dish or fish. Uh, wanted to talk to a fish. Yeah. I can tell you're doing well. Now, the next line doesn't have to rhyme with the first two. Hmm, where would I go to talk to a fish? Lake. He jumped in the lake. And the cold made him shake. Yeah. One more line to go, and it must rhyme with wish and fish. Look at the screen, it's Dunedin. I fear your last line comes too late. Dunedin is here to seal your fate. <laughs>